If I can have your attention, please, here in Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Uh, it's a real treat, real privilege to have our six-time NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion, Jimmy Johnson, pay us a visit Sunday morning in the media center. And uh, it's not often that uh, we're able to bring in one of our sports stars the day of the event. And uh, I appreciate it, Jimmy. Appreciate your race team, Amy, everybody over at Hendrick Motorsports for uh, giving us a few minutes here. Uh, obviously, Jimmy, coming off the big win last week at Atlanta, but before we get into that, uh, I know you've been very, very busy this weekend here in Las Vegas, and you know every time I turn around, I see you on TV with a hard hat on and, and uh, doing a lot of things to helping out the Habitat for Humanity uh, build for your sponsor, Lowe's, and this, then this morning, uh, turning the keys over to a, uh, a family. Maybe tell us about a little bit about that experience, and then also, you know, Lowe's is the race entitlement this weekend with the Cobalt 400. Maybe just talk about the longstanding partnership you've had with them and their dedication to the sport of NASCAR because they certainly are uh, a class act. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm very honored to uh, to represent Lowe's and Cobalt week in and week out. And after 14 years of uh, you know representing the brand. Um, you know, they continue to amaze me and, and do great things. Uh, they love the sport. They love uh, Team Lowe's Racing. Um, you know, they, they find it very important for them to be here in this space and connect with our fan base. So uh, very, very thankful for that. Um, they, they also do so much in the charitable world. I've had multiple builds with them with the Habitat for Humanity, including the one here this weekend. And I just had a chance to meet the family and their five daughters. And uh, they, they are... Uh, so so happy. I mean, you can't. I had a hard time looking them in the eyes because they would start to tear up, and of course, it catches you. Uh, it catches my emotions as well. Um, you know, they they continue to support communities abroad uh, through a variety of different charities, and, uh, and I'm thankful for our foundation and their involvement, our involvement with them in, in the public education um, world that we we work in, and then also with Habitat. So, a lot of fun. I've been busy. It's been uh, I had a trip in L.A. for some. Uh, Kind of non-traditional media before we got here and then since we've been here at the track um, just spreading the word about cobalt and their involvement the habitat build um, and some time in the race car and the car has been super fast and uh, hopefully we can take the take our sponsors trophy home back where it belongs okay thank you jimmy we'll take a few questions for jimmy if you have one raise your hand opportunity to uh, talk to six-time nascar sprint cup series champion jimmy johnson holly kane we're going to let you lead off. Nobody better than this media center to lead off than you. Go ahead. That's a lot of pressure, Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Holly Kane, uh, NASCAR.com. My question was actually kind of a little bit off subject. I wanted to ask you how you're kind of going about the West Coast swing. What is your travel like? Are the, are, is your family out with you? What, what kind of thing? Are you staying out here mostly, going back and forth? How are you handling it? Yeah, we're going back and forth. Shani's real busy at home, um, then uh, kids and school, and and then the last piece of it is Lydia's sleep schedule. She won't sleep in the bus or in a hotel. So to set ourselves up to succeed, um, they, they stayed home this weekend. Uh, next weekend, I'm going to meet them in Colorado after the race. We're going to have some fun and, and do a little spring skiing, and then I'll continue on to Fontana, and they'll go home. So... Uh, you know, they're, Evie's strong enough and old enough to kind of deal with the time change and the late night flying, but Lydia's still a little too young for all that. So I, I enjoy it. I wish, and I look forward to the, the day when things maybe calm down at home and we could spend three weeks on the West Coast. There's so much to see and do, um, you know, here, my hometown, um, you spend a lot of time in the mountains, whatever it might be. I mean, we'd really enjoy that, but probably a year or so away from it, really enjoying the West Coast swing. Right there behind you. Go ahead. Brad Norman, NASCAR.com. Jimmy, you've won here four times, in, including three in a row. Uh, you've won in Charlotte four times in a row. Next week, when we go to Phoenix, Kevin's won there three times in a row. What, what's it like for you uh, as a driver to get sort of in the zone uh, at a certain track? I had no idea I'd done that, or Kevin has. So um, I guess streaks you're not really aware of because there's so much time between events, and you know each year goes by. You last memories last time you're on track type of thing but uh the tracks that work for certain drivers and we all know when we go to phoenix got to deal with the four car or kevin regardless of the car he's in the 29 or the four charlotte's been that way for us 
um, Dover, you know, Martinsville's kind of been in that wheelhouse too. So it, I, I enter those races just excited for the opportunity and, and hopeful to uh, to stockpile some wins. And, you know, I, I see what, uh, let's see, Darrell Waltrip did at uh, Bristol and such a big number winning there. And we've been able to be the most winningest driver at a few tracks. And I take a lot of pride in that and want to pad that if I can. Let's go to this gentleman right here. Go ahead. And we'll go to Chris. Rick Johnson, St. George News. Uh, Jimmy, I've followed you son, from before you <coughs> drove cars on asphalt. Just love to watch a race. Everything I understand, you really like a loose car. They're running the old Mint 400 here next, <laughs> coming up coming in up. a few days. Have you ever thought about returning to your roots after everything's said and done, get back out in the dirt? Yeah, the dirt is definitely in my future. Um, I, my last trip to Mexico didn't go so well, so I'm not sure I'm ready to head south. But and one of my favorite races was in Barstow. Um, I love the terrain there. This one here is pretty tough on you, rattles you, uh, rattles everything out of you. Uh, but I, I love the dirt. I love getting off the ground. So if it's on two wheels, four wheels, and probably four wheels to you know competitively go out and race, I'll definitely be on the dirt. Yeah. Let's go to Chris, and then we'll go to Steve. Chris. Chris Nightcatchfence.com. Far left, Jimmy. Over here. That's okay. Um, now that you have a win under your belt after the second race of the season, what's your strategy? Um, do you guys have a strategy? Do you guys feel a little bit better knowing that you have a win so early in the season? Or do you guys just try to go out there and get as multiple wins as possible? Yeah, I mean, we want as many wins as possible. Uh, winning early is nice because you kind of, for all intents and purposes, lock yourself in to, to the chase. And that's the first box we need to check as a race team, especially for the 48 team. But then again, it is so early that we, we can't think that we've got it under control. I mean, we have so many months of racing between now and when the chase starts that uh, you know, we could lose our way, find our way again. It was just, just a lot of racing between now and then. So um, excited, but, but we're just getting started in, in 2015. Right here to Steve. Oh, you did? OK. Uh, <laughs> A few years ago, we talked to you about your Cobalt sponsorship, and you said you couldn't really change a light bulb. Um, how, how gratifying is it now to go out and swing a hammer with Habitat, and are you any better mechanically or with a hammer or a light bulb now than you were a couple of years ago because of your sponsorship, maybe? I was just trying to keep my wife from figuring out I can do stuff around the house. Um, <laughs> I've worked on plenty of stuff over the years, and I guess... Uh, begrudgingly change light bulbs and, and get involved when I can. But you know, the schedule is so busy, it's tough to, to kind of enjoy the moments of doing it yourself around the house. Um, I, I can say, though, that having kids and Christmas time and birthdays and just stuff in general, it has kind of sharpened my mechanical skills again. I find myself assembling things much more regularly now. Still don't make my way to the light bulbs, and Shani you know, doesn't like that. but. We'll figure, we got somebody else can change light bulbs. Well, what have you assembled? Oh man, it's, uh, it's quite a few things. And I have to give Matt Kenseth uh, props for this one approach of assembling things. You know, it gets frustrating, especially some of these kids' toys on Christmas Eve or whatever it is. Um, he suggested that I look at that job as an opportunity to enjoy a beer. So it could be a one beer, two or three beer project. Instead of thinking I've got to rush through this, get it done, just to kind of change your vantage point on it. So that, that's been very helpful. So no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fixed yeah, right. Fix the shifter, in Michigan. So or any whatever. any four, five, or six beer projects? No, nothing that deep yet. Years young, but we'll we'll see what happens when July comes around for the first birthday. Yep. Stan, you have a question? Yes, sir. Right over there, Wyatt. Jimmy Stan Creekmore with CompetitionPlus.com. I want to take you very back to the start of this interview. You talked about meeting five young girls. Could you expand on that a little bit? Because pretty much what you've done is given five young girls the most incredible moment of their lives already. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so moving to you know, meet the family and see their excitement. And then it helps pull your mind into their situation. Um, I think they were in a two-bedroom apartment with seven people. Um, and I, I just can't even imagine that. So to have a home that can adequately suit them, um, provide for them, and then they don't have to worry about it financially. So, you know, the the opportunity it gives this family and, and a wonderful family, um, you know, it's just 
it's just awesome to give give a family and these children, these people, an opportunity to uh, to succeed. And um, you know, we all have the luxury of going home to our house and know what that feels like, and uh, to also be able to help provide that opportunity for a family just is awesome. Did you get hugged? No, there there were some tears, but I didn't get uh, we didn't hug it out too much. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you got it. We'll take one more question, and then we're going to get a little photo here of uh, Jimmy and uh, Craig. Go ahead. Brand James, USA Today Sports. You've obviously been around to see a lot of odd things in, in NASCAR, but in no particular order in the last three weeks, we've had a race car stolen, Eldora's website hacked, craziness in qualifying, a major injury, legal problems with another driver, and a very visible driver versus driver discussion slash argument on pit road. Pound for pound, is this among the weirdest You've seen a season start since you've been around here. Something happened yesterday too. Well, that was well, the web, the Eldora website. Well, the uh, well, who was it was the confrontation with drivers. Well, Danny and Danica, the discussion. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I missed that one. Cool, cool. Forgot that one. It's on yep, YouTube. Yep. Check it out. You'll like yeah, it. no, no, I saw it. I just thought something happened yesterday. I was like, man, I missed it. Uh, <laughs> but is that old saying, uh, any press is good press? Um, I think it applies to most of those examples you gave. Uh, it has been a wacky year, unfortunately. Um, you know, some of the stuff w is is not not good. Injuries aren't good. The legal situation is not good. Um, you know, I think on a positive note, there's been a lot of great competition, and I think this package is going to provide some great racing. But uh, from Eldora's site getting hacked, um, you sure it wasn't Tony just figuring out how to work the internet? <laughs> Pretty sure. Okay, yeah. must have been some great content. <laughs> Wow, yeah. that is incredible. The car being stolen, I've, uh, I have never. Um, that's quite interesting. I saw Travis Quapple, my rental car was parked in the way and he was trying to pull his motorhome out to go home and he knocked on the door and moved the car for him. And he, <laughs> I mean, he was still shocked 14 hours later, just like, I can't believe it. Like, I don't have a race car, it's gone. So it has been a wacky start to the year.